Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to go over making your HUDs go transparent when your player goes behind it. This is pretty common when you come up to the edge of a scene and the player can kind of go up in the corner and that's kind of where your portion of your HUDs are. And then you can't really see what's going on behind your HUD. And so we're going to fix that and it's actually super easy. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in the scene and I just want to show off the problem. Right now we have a HUD, but when we go behind the HUD, we can't really see what's going on. And then when we run down to this corner, the same problem. So we're gonna make these go transparent. So there's two main things that we need to do to accomplish this. The first one is we need a way for the HUD to know where the player is at. And since we cannot detect objects between menu scenes and normal scenes, we have to create an overlay on the normal scene that shows exactly where the HUD is at. And then we can use that to base where our player object is according to the HUD. The next thing that we need to do is we need to find an easy way to filter all the objects in the menu scene. For example, you might have an object in your menu scene that has a lot going on with it. It could have animation changes of its own, apply filter effects. So you don't want to have to pull them out of each individual action and then put them back in, risking the apply filter effect to happen again. You don't want any of that. You want it to happen wherever it's at. And that way you can just leave the logic alone for the individual objects. And so that is the second thing that we need to accomplish. And that's very simple. We can do that using invincibility related settings. So the first things first, let's get an overlay of the HUD exactly so that we can detect where the player is at. So let's create an object. We'll name this HUD transparency or HUD transparent, that's fine. I'm going to give it an icon just so that we can see where we're, where it's at on the scene. I'm gonna put it into the neutrals, meaning nothing can detect it ever. And then also I'll remove all the groups. So once we're here, here's our icon. And so I'm just gonna say icon only. And then we'll have our second action be the move to uh, cam uh, center of camera. All right, and then we're gonna remove the icon here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it and we're gonna set coordinate. And my resolution on this game is 1280 by 720. So I know halfway point is 640 by 360. The next important thing is, is that we need to make sure that the coordinates are displayed area based. Now this is gonna mean that it's gonna be based off your camera, okay? If we didn't have this clicked, then this is just gonna go to 640 by 360 on the scene, and that could be where the camera's not. So we need that click so that it goes to the center of the camera. We want it to happen instantly, so I'm gonna make the time, targeted time be zero seconds. And we're just gonna to wanna to make sure that's the object self and that we stop object actions. So before we go into the next action, we're gonna do this move. Now you might be asking, okay, well, that's great. That's one move to the center, but how do you keep it in the center? So all we have to do to keep it stuck to the camera is go to the basic settings. And then down here, there's an option called fix relative position to camera. And when we click that, it's going to constantly stick with the camera. Now I'm gonna unselect some of these unnecessary things for this object. And now we have enough to actually go on the scene and test it. So let's go to the scene here and let's take our HUD transparent right here. And I'm just gonna stick it up here in the top corner. It doesn't matter where you put it. And then when we play test, we should be able to see that it will come to the center of the screen. Oh, we can't see it because it's transparent. So let's just actually leave this editor icon on for now. And now let's play test. All right, so we see that all it did was it instantly moved to the center of the camera. And because I have that fixed relative position to it, it will now stick with the camera no matter where I go. All right, so that is the first part of it. Now we need to actually start to show where the HUD is according to the normal scene. And so now that we have an object on the normal scene, we're gonna use the best way to just detect an object and that is field of vision. We're gonna go and give this a field of vision and we're going to create two of them. You would need 
a field of vision in any quadrant of the menu HUD that you would need. So in our case, in this example, I'm just going to do the heart area on the top and the spell area on the bottom. So I'm just going to name this uh, hearts. And then I'll name this heart spells. Now I had some pretty good sizes for these already predetermined here. So for scale on the hearts, I went like this. I'm going to leave it applied for now. I left it centered. And then for the adjustment, it's actually easier than it looks. So we know that on the scene, when we're in the middle of it, we're at 640 because this whole thing is 1280. So when we're in the middle, it's 640. So if I wanted to come up to this top corner, I know that I would need to come about 640 pixels this way, but a little bit more in. So it would probably be more about maybe 600 pixels, maybe 580. And then we also know that we need to go up. Well, we know that halfway point right here, this is 720. So halfway point is 360. So if we wanted to go up, we would need to go about 300 pixels up. So now we can just go and do some of those adjustments. So I found a, fi a negative 550 because going left is negative. And then a negative 275. So going up is also negative to be a good placement for that. Now if we go to the spells, let's see what the scale was. It was about 150, 150. And then the adjustment was negative 580 and then 300 since we're going down. So we're going down. And since we've got these selected colors applied, let's see how that looks. All right, so now you can see the general area where these field divisions are going. And because of relative or fixed relative to camera, the field divisions are going to stay with that. Now, the cool thing is, is you can see the relative, since it's relative, once the camera stops moving, the player can now enter under the HUD and we can now trigger that field of vision. So let's do that. Let's set that logic up. All right, so back in the actions here, we're going to create two more states. And we will get rid of the icon now that we know that the icon does in fact move. This state is going to be transparent off. And then this state is going to be transparent on. I guess we can also get rid of the move objects. We don't need those. And it's going to go uh, unconditionally. All right, so this is all we need for right now before we get into setting up the actual filter effect. But what we want to do is just make the links for it right now. And we know that this one is going to be when we discover either on the hearts, the player group, and then we need another one or discover the spells player group. And these are going to be or because you can either be at the spells or at the hearts and you want to trigger it. So then we're going to take this same link. We're going to copy and paste it. Let me straighten these up a bit. And there's no way to say is not in the field of vision anymore. So what we have to do is we have to click this gray button over here, the, the opposite value. So now it's saying is not in the hearts field of vision and is not in the spell field of vision. Now, whenever you're exiting something like this, it's usually an and, okay? Because we have to be clear of the spell and the heart HUD in order for it to go back to normal. And so now we have the, the link set up, we have the logic set up. Now we can go to the filtering, which is the next step in the equation. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to all of our HUD objects. So in this case, the HUD managers are on the HUD, as well as the HP control. This is where the hearts are actually assigned and show. And then also the magic bar. These other ones are just logic only. So I've got three objects that I need to hide when I get behind. 
And so the easiest way to do that, since I've got multiple objects, is I'm going to actually create a switch here. And we're gonna call this transparent HUD. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into each of these and all we're gonna do is go to the cog wheel and apply an invincibility related setting. We're gonna go into that tab, we're gonna click on it and we're gonna say transparent. Now we can use an invincibility related setting in these HUD objects because they're not getting hit, they're not, nothing's really happening. So we can actually use these to apply filters instantly and not have them leave their actions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say an infinite amount of time because while the whole time you're under the HUD, you want them to be doing this. And we're going to say that we want them to go transparent. And I'll just put in 40%. You can even have it take a certain amount of time. I found a quick like 0.1 or 0.2 looks really nice. And we can click OK. We do not need it to blink. We don't need any of these really. But the one thing that we do need is we need to set the enable and the disable switch. And that's going to be the common transparent HUD. So now what we can do is we can copy this invincibility right here. We can go to the HP control, for instance, set up the invincibility related setting tab, and then paste. You might have to create one to paste it. There you go. Yeah. So you have to create one, you can paste it, then delete the one you created. And now it's set up exactly the same way. So the last thing that I got to do is set it up for my bar. You'd have to do this again for every object. And there we go. So now all of my objects on the HUD now have the invincibility related setting set up. So now to trigger it. And that is going to be done in the HUD transparent object. So when the transparency is off, then that means that the common transparency HUD is also off. And so then that means when it's on, we want it on. Now, just by turning on this switch itself, all it does, if we go back to the invincibility related setting, all it does is say, okay, this is gonna be the invincibility that plays when that object's invincible. It does not start the invincibility. So we still have to start the invincibility. And how we're gonna do that is simply by, let's go to uh, the transparent on here. We need to grab all of those objects, invincibility switches and turn them on. So depending on how many objects you have, this could be a little bigger, but the thing is, is that it's a lot easier to maintain this because you've only got one object that will be turning all these things on than it would be to try to have every object micromanage itself. So I'm just going to select the HUD managers. I'm gonna select all because I want all of the HUD manager objects that I have on the scene. I want their invincibility to turn on. And what I mean by all, is you can see in the HUD manager, I have several different things. I have the player magic select or player one magic select, player two magic select. These are all individual objects on the scene. I have this area fall detection, which doesn't really matter. I have the keys. The keys are in this manager, the gold are. And then the backgrounds. So the backgrounds are on here as well. So all of these things will be affected by that one single switch, invincibility with all on. Now I do have two separate objects, so we gotta go make sure those are taken care of too. And that is the HP control. Got to make sure. And I'll just leave all. It doesn't matter because I know there's only one, but we can just do, we can leave them as all. And then the next one is the magic bar. And we'll turn it on. Now notice that I'm turning on the transparent HUD before I'm turning on the invincibility related settings. Now there is one thing I could have probably just had no switch assigned to this. And if I had no switch assigned to this, that meant that it will be the default one. So there could have been a step skipped here. 
but that's fine. We'll just go with this for now because it makes sense. It's clear. It's visually clear what's going on here. So we need to now turn them off when we're out of the field of vision. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to paste them right here. And then we're just going to switch this to off. You could toggle them also, also if you wanted. If you did toggle them, you would toggle them in here as well. You wouldn't turn them on. You would toggle and then you would toggle again is usually how that works. Again, you could get away with it probably right there. But And so now we should have a working system. So when I go up, it's going to trigger all the objects in the HUD to go uh, dim. And then when I leave, they're going to come back out of the filter. So then I can go down to the bottom of the spells and boom, once again, it triggers the transparency. Now you can adjust the transparency, how, uh, transparency however you need it in that. But that is exactly how you can tell the HUD that you are behind it. Now, let's just say that you wanted this section to only go dim when you're underneath it and not all of the menu. Well, then in that case, you would need a specific object for every corner like that. So you would set up another object just like this HUD transparency, except for it would only be for that quadrant. So I did it as the whole HUD because it's one, easier logic, two, it's less objects, which is always going to increase your performance, especially when you've got one that is following the camera consistently. And so yeah, that is how you make the HUD go transparent. Always remember though, the field of visions, remember to turn them off here. That way you can get a nice and neat and natural looking fade out. So yeah, I hope this video helped. If there's any questions, come to the Discord, the Steam forums, or comment below and we'll get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video. Thank you.